Welcome back to A Country Boy Can Cook. It's mid-September, and a few years back at this time of year, I would be out dove hunting, getting ready to bow hunt at my deer lease, or even years before that, I would be working as a guide down in South Texas on some ranches around Fort McCabot. Uh, I was just thinking this morning, uh, I watch a lot of hunting shows on TV because I can't physically get out and do it anymore, but I have great memories of that past. And I was thinking about the food on this one ranch. Uh, it was a huge ranch, thousands of acres at Fort McCabot. Uh, there were some workers that lived there. My border buddy, my border brothers as I call them. And uh, we'd fix breakfast and stuff and they always had a big old pot of pinto beans going that they had fixed refried beans. And one day I come up, we'd been hunting with some clients and I came back to the camp and they were, uh, looked like hamburger patties they were frying up. And what was really odd, I've said this before on my channel, uh, they would cook the bacon and sausage, homemade deer sausage that they had on the place. And uh, there was a big rock, I think it was granite, I, I wouldn't swear to what it was. It, they had cooked over years and they'd build a fire and put the coals under it, heat up and they'd cook on top. Well, I thought maybe they had hamburger uh, meat cooking. It smelled really good and looked good. And I remember asking them, they said uh, frijole patties, or patties frijole, or however they pronounced it. And I said, beans? They said, oh yeah, yeah, fry them up, they're really good. So today I'm gonna make those. Uh, I've, got some, I've got some leftover beans that I've thawed out from the last cook I had. And, uh, I'm going to try to make them in my air fryer. I believe it'll work. Uh, not sure, but let's hang on and I'll be right back with you and I'll reposition the camera and that way you can see what's going on. All right, back with you. I'm not sure how much beans they were there in a Ziploc bag. I'm going to say maybe two cups, something like that. Use whatever you got. I'm going to take a potato, a potato masher and just mash these down. And I've drained these beans. I put them in a a strainer and drain a lot of it out. A lot of the juices. I mean, it won't hurt anything if there's juices in it. It just takes longer to cook and more uh, meal. And they use masa flour uh, to make these. So, let me get these all mashed up for you. And I'll bring you right back when I've got finished the mashing. All right, back with you. I've got them mashed up pretty good. They don't have to have, not all of them have to be mashed, just some of them, or 90% of them maybe. I've got one egg. I'm gonna crack it and put it in here. All right. I don't need this anymore. I get the egg mix totally mixed in. I'm gonna put adobo seasoning, adobo seasoning. It's got a little garlic, salt, a little pepper mixture. It's great for fajitas and stuff. I use it on my scrambled eggs and all. Not a lot. Uh, what else? Oh, I'm gonna add some onion. Onion powder. I want to keep this really simple. If I had an onion that was already chopped up, I'd be putting it in there. Let me let me mix this up in my lap here. So I can... The egg is going to help bind everything together, of course. is a good way to use if you're sick of just eating red beans and cornbread which who gets sick of that but you might then uh, 
I've got Martha White cornbread mix. It's great to make cornbread with. And I don't even know how much I'm going to put in here. Oh yeah, I was going to put a little bit of pepper. Just black pepper. Put that in there right there. So, you just want to sprinkle a little bit of it in there. Get in my lap once again to stir around. You just want enough to, to be able to form patties. And that was not enough. I know that my border brothers, they make something called a papusa, I think. It's flour tortilla mixed, corn tortilla mix, and it's got beans and all kinds of things in it. But this is a little different. I just remember they would fix this and fry it on the, the rock and oh my gosh, it was great. I'm just added enough to, to get it so I can form patties out of it. And your measurements may be different from mine because don't know how many beans you might have left over. Let me get this mixed in. I'm trying to keep this video short. Let me get this mixed in and I'll bring it back when it's ready to form patties. Well, that was three or four glups of cornmeal later. And I believe I've got it just about the right texture. You want to form a dough out of it like you were making pie dough. And actually, I will bring y'all back uh, maybe a few videos from now. I have a recipe that I've made before. When I worked for the plastic, I used to work for a plastic surgeon, and I would take a lot of food and cakes and stuff over there. That's what that's all that's all a cook or a chef wants, just people to smile when he brings food. And uh, I took a pie over there one day, and they said, "What is it?" And everybody was smelling of it, and I said, "Well, taste of it." And so it kind of tastes like pumpkin. And someone said, oh, no, that's sweet potato pie. And after it was gone, I told them, I said, well, you're all wrong. It was bean pie, pinto bean pie. It was pinto beans cooked with no flavoring, no, no salt or no sugar or, or, I'm sorry, no ham or bacon or anything. It was just pinto beans and uh, made into a pie. And it was seasoned, of course, with nutmeg and cinnamon and, you know, all the good stuff, the sugars and stuff, butter. It was really good. It was a, a Depression Era recipe that I wanted to try. So let's get this air fryer going here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it on, turn it on and put it on the air fry. I'm going to put it on about 400. Uh, I'll do it 20 minutes and now let's try it at 385, 380. I'm going to bring this, this is the grill dripping pan. Heck, I can't get my, there it is. It's already starting to get warm in there. Usually as a grill pan goes over the top and it catches the room, but I've cooked cooked fish on it, bacon on it. And works good. I'm gonna spray it with a nonstick butter flavored. You know, what's wrong with that? So you can see it's still a few beans that that look like you know they're whole beans in there, and that's that's good. I don't know how many this is going to make. I'm going to just get a heaping tablespoon full. Kind of pat them out like you would a, a, a salmon patty. <laughs> the reason I have a hard time saying that is because I do not like that. My mother used to cook those things. and Now, I like the taste of them. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was great. The, the flavor was great. 
but I would always end up with one of those soft bones. Even, mother, even though my mother went through it and took them out, I would always get the one she missed somehow. And uh, it was just my luck. I learned later on, and I'll, I'll do a video on this, how I make them. But I use canned tuna. And I know there's no bones in that. No bones about it. And with the odd thing about it, I love sardines. But why? I, and, and some of those got, they have soft bones and stuff in them. I'm going to spray it again with a little bit of butter flavor. Way to crisp up on the top, good. I'm also going to use my spatula to kind of mash it down, make it look pretty. It's hot in there. It's already 380 degrees. Two minutes in, I'm going to reset the time on it to 20 minutes. Get me around so you can see the see those babies in there. Here, hopefully can in there cooking away. Oop! Get the light on there. It won't take long. I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Well, it's been cooking away for three minutes now. I was gonna just gonna ask you if you've ever had bean patties, like, you know, red bean patties, cooked with cornmeal or flour. And this Martha White cornmeal mix has flour in it. Uh, it's got self-rising cornmeal and, and flour all together. Not sure what the ratios are, but you could just use flour or you could use straight cornmeal and it doesn't have to rise a lot so uh, anyway have you ever done this before you ever had it before i know i see a lot of stuff on the internet about bean patties you know for burgers and stuff black beans and all you really have to do to do that is take an onion i would chop up some fresh jalapeno and put it in there some onion in real little pieces enough that you know you had the flour in it i mean the flavor in it easy for me to say and uh cook those babies like this in the air fryer. It'd be really healthy for you. Uh, I've tried to adjust my diet to the, especially for the last couple of years uh, since I had this heart event to uh, eat healthier, uh, which, which I'm staying on track. There's days I try to get off track, but I try to stay on track most of the time. So uh, anyway, I'll bring you back when this stuff is finished. All right, it's been in right at five minutes. Let's check these babies. Get a light on here. Let's see how they look here. I don't know if I have to flip them. Are they getting crispy on the bottom? Yes, they are. Well, they smell really good. It doesn't take long. The cornmeal cooks pretty quick. Uh, the egg cooks in, with just in a minute. I'll check the temperature on before we get too high on these. And if I want more browning, I'll turn it on broil, air broil. It'll brown up anything in just a second. Let's check the temperature on right quick. Setting here. And video is not too long at this point. It's 162 degrees in there. So I know they're cooked. I'm going to turn it on to air boil now. So it's cooked uh, seven minutes. Turn on my air broil. There's no temperature on it, it just broils high. Alright. 
All right, I'm gonna bring you back. Let's check these again. They've been cooking a total of three minutes on air broil. Let's see if they're getting brown on the outside at all. I'm gonna check underneath these. See what they look like. Man, it smells wonderful. Oh yeah, they're done. I will tell you, when, when they fried them on that rock, and of course they were using lard, uh, it, uh, they fried up and looked like hamburger patties. There ain't nothing wrong with this for sure. Put it back in. Put a little cover on the other side. I'm going to turn that back to air broil, I mean air fry. And this time I'm going to kick it up to 425 degrees, 420. I'll bring you back in just a second. This is my first time ever cooking these in an air fryer, so you're along for the ride just like me. I do believe it's going to turn out great though. Got you back here. Let's pull these things out. They've been in three and a half minutes on air on air fry at 420 degrees. So I'm gonna stop the cooking. I've got a couple of more small ones that's gonna go in. Let's see. I don't want to burn them, and so it's hard to tell in the air fryer. Oh no, they're getting really crispy. They're really doing good. And I will tell you, once you pull something out of the air fryer, if you've got a few minutes. It will get darker in color. I don't, I don't know what the deal is, if it is. But you can see those looking, they're nice looking. I would say I drain them on some grease here. You see they're holding together. You could make a hamburger patty out of these. And of course, they could be served with salsa. Yes, that's hot any of your favorite condiments for beans. When they would cook them down there, they had a big bottle of ketchup. Everybody went for the ketchup. So let's put these last two on here. I'm trying to make these real thin. Speed up the cooking. I won't bring y'all along for that so you know how they cook already. It's definitely a good way to use up pinto beans. Uh, and if you want to fix, fix something vegan, and just cook your beans in water and salt and brown them up or buy you a can of beans. And, uh, they don't have to have uh, seasoning in them. And uh, you can make you your own vegetable burgers. Put anything you want in it. Any of your flavorings. All right, back again. Air fry. Temperature 425. All right, let me get the camera over here so you can see this. All right, as you can see, they're nice and got a good suntan on it. I tasted one of the little one of the little pieces that I right here a while ago. Another one. Boy, it's really good. Not much to it. A little adobo. Martha White. Cornmeal mix. Hot rise. Whatever that means. Well, it's really good. It's a cross between pinto beans and cornbread. And it's yummy. Well, thanks for being part of this video recipe. Uh, like I say, I was thinking about that this morning. I was... I was just breaking day and I was looking and there were some dove flying around and I've kind of had the inkling to go dove hunting but my grandson has all of my firearms I gifted them to him uh, there was I put a picture of him up the other day of my him uh, with my old Beretta over and under and some dove he had killed he sent that to me so anyway I'm gonna enjoy these for dinner I'm not sure what I'm, I think I'm just gonna have some ketchup on that's the best way I've done it 
make your make your food stretch change your flavors up like I say onion jalapeno would be really good in this I just didn't have any onion chopped and I didn't have any fresh jalapenos so thanks again for being part of the old dude's world old dude out of here you could definitely fry these they would be darker in color but I think the taste would still be the same enjoy the recipe thank you